Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Ellie. Today I'm going to be doing my March reading wrap up. So March, I was in probably the biggest reading slump I've ever had. Although I did still manage to read 12 books, which I was really surprised by because it felt like I read hardly anything. I actually ended up doing, I think, quite a few books as well. So I'm only going to talk about the ones that I actually finished. Let's get on with what I read in March. So the first book I read was an arc and that was All Them Friends by Lulu Moore. And I did actually see this in Waterstones as well this month after I finished reading it. So it's out now. But I gave this a four out of five stars. This is the story of Oz and Kate. They are both at university in England and they're both on their college rowing teams. Arthur, who goes by Oz, he studies at Oxford and Kate studies at Cambridge. So they are on rival rowing teams and when they first meet they don't know that the other one is on the rival team but Oz has a bit of a reputation with himself and also who his family is. For him it's love at first sight when he sees Kate but she is kind of put off by his reputation and he is determined to prove to her that he is not what people say he is. Then she finds out that he is on the enemy team and that's kind of like it. She feels that she cannot pursue it no matter how she feels for him because you know they're rivals. They decide that actually they're going to try and make it work but they have to keep their relationship secret because it would be a really big deal and could potentially affect their teams if people knew that they were actually together. I don't know anything about rowing but I was like fully immersed in this story. I found that Oz was like a really cute male main character and you could really tell how much he cared about Kate and they both also had really supportive friends around them as well which was really nice to see. Then the second book I read this month was This Blood That Binds Us by S.L. Coakley. So this had been on my TBR for quite some time. Honestly I saw it on TikTok and the cover like I just immediately wanted to read it so I saw someone selling a copy on Vinted so I picked it up and then it had sat on my shelves for a while and I finally decided to read it and it was okay. I gave it three out of five stars. This is a romance set in college. You follow Aaron and Kimberly. So Aaron is a vampire and that is what made me want to pick this book up. Like aside from the cover, like vampire romances, like they're my favourite. At the start of the book, Kimberly is on a solo camping trip in the woods. This is something she does quite often. She's always felt very like prepared and safe for it. But this time she ends up getting attacked in the woods and at first she thinks it's an animal but then she realises it is a vampire. We then learn that this vampire is the male main character Aaron. So Kimberly she ends up in hospital but she just wants to get out of there because she is convinced she's seen this vampire even though the doctors and everyone are telling her it was an animal attack. So she returns to college, she is on campus, and that is when we find out that Aaron also attends the same college. He sees her walking around and he had been feeling really, really guilty about the attack. He didn't mean to hurt her and he's just so relieved to see that she was okay. So he kind of wants to go over and apologise to her, but he doesn't want to let her know. So when he approaches her, she immediately recognises him and is like, stay away from me. I'm going to tell everyone who and what you are. And he's like, you know, who's gonna believe you and at this point i was like this is gonna be so good <laughs> then sort of the real plot comes in and it turns out that there may be another vampire on campus one who may be a bit more dangerous with a bit more sinister intentions so they decide to team up together to try and find out who this new vampire is and what they want as they seem to be targeting kimberly as well as that aaron does have some big issues within his family that is like part of the plot throughout the book and I mean like it was okay I liked the setting the characters were okay and the cover is obviously gorgeous but I just felt like something was lacking and I feel like this may have been at the start of my slump like this book had so much potential I just feel it didn't reach what it could have been and I'm really sad about that then the third book I read was Thieves Gambit by KB and Lewis and I absolutely loved this book and I thought the slump was over when I picked this one up. I gave this a five out of five stars. In this one our main character Rosalind, she goes by Ross, she is part of a family of thieves and at the start of the book she's like on a mission for her mum and she is kind of fed up with the life because they are thieves. She's not allowed friends because she can't trust anyone and she's just really lonely so she is trying to devise a plan to kind of run away for the summer to have an experience somewhere else so she can pretend to be a normal teenager before she returns back to her thief lifestyle. So she has this plan in place, she's all ready to go but then something happens and she ends up not being able to leave. 
This is when she receives an email from the Thieves Gambit. So Thieves Gambit is an elite competition, so a load of elite thieves from around the world are contacted, they're all teenagers, and they are invited to take part in the Thieves Gambit, and the prize is a wish. Because of what happens, I won't say because it is a spoiler, Ross decides that she is going to take part because she knows exactly what she is going to wish for. So there are a series of tasks throughout this, they are really high stakes and then gradually the participants are kicked off if they don't perform properly. There are a group of like really rich people who like organise this and are watching them and they like vote on who they want to stay and I read this within like 24 hours, I was completely hooked and it's YA and, and I don't really read a lot of YA these days yeah, I would like 100% recommend this one. There is another book coming out, I'm not sure when, but I'm definitely gonna pick that up. The fourth book I read this month was The Billionaire's Runaway Bride by Emma Marie Cruz. This was another arc free net galley. And I also gave this one a five out of five stars. So at the start of this book, we have Lauren, our female main character, and she is getting ready to marry her fiance, Jeremy, and she doesn't love him. He cheats on her, she knows it, but she's being forced into it. Her parents are making her, and it's just, very much a wedding for show and her best friend's there and she knows that she doesn't want to go through with this but Lauren she she has no choice and her friend convinces her to run away hence the title of this book so her friend gives her her car keys she has a stash of money and she drives to a bus station gets on the first bus and just goes to the next town that she can get to. We also meet at the start Caleb who is the male main character and he is the CEO of a metalworks company and he is involved in a scandal and, and people around him tell him that he should get away for a while, take a break, let the scandal blow over before it starts to affect him and his reputation. So they give him the details of this ski resort, it's the off season so he should be able to just get out of the way, no one's gonna know who he is and just stay out of trouble for a couple of weeks. So he arrives and this is where he bumps into Lauren on the street, like they literally bump into each other. And obviously Lauren is very flustered considering what she has just gone through. And she then comes across this bed and breakfast. She gets talking to the owner, Marion, who really feels sorry for her after she's found out what Lauren has been through over the last couple of days. And she invites her to stay at the bed and breakfast in exchange for some help around it, which Lauren agrees to. She's always liked the idea of like interior design. So she just like really appreciates this. That is until Caleb shows up at the B&B and they find out that's where he is supposed to be staying. And she takes an instant dislike to him, whereas he instantly likes her. And again, he just wants to prove to her that he is not his reputation. And the B&B owner, Marion, is watching them and she decides that she is gonna try and play matchmaker. So she asks Caleb if he also would like to help do up the bed and breakfast whilst he is there. And she keeps sending the two of them on these like little errands and giving them little tasks together to force them to spend time together to try and match make them. I was just rooting for them as a couple the whole way through, like I love the setting, I love the characters and I just thought it was a really sweet story. The fifth book of the month was again another arc and that was The Cupcake Cowboy by Rose Rain Rivers and this one I gave a three out of five. So this is the story of Caitlin and Blake. Caitlin is a waitress and at the start of the book she is serving a table with Blake and his friends. Blake has always liked Caitlin but he believes that she is like dating one of his friends Matt so he's always like stayed away. Then they literally bump into each other. That seems to be a theme of the books this month and this is where their story begins. He learns that she isn't actually seeing his friend and maybe she doesn't even like this friend. And again, I have mixed feelings about this one. So I'm gonna read it off my laptop screen what I thought. So I liked the story and I liked the relationship between Caitlin and Blake. It was very insta I'm not always a fan of that, but I felt it did work well in this story. The writing of it was good. Like the story flowed well. And Caitlin has a friend called Ali and their friendship just felt like very real and like a very true friendship. There is some spice of this and Blake always made sure to check for consent, which I appreciated. He was always there ready to boost Caitlin's confidence when she wasn't feeling great about herself, which was another great quality about him. The one main thing that annoyed me throughout this book as as you can see the title is the cupcake cowboy now cowboy and cupcake were the nicknames that they gave each other and they use these nearly every sentence to the point where the nicknames stopped being cute and just started to really get on my nerves like it didn't need to be used that much and this was the author's first full-length novel so like 
considering it was like their first book i do think it was really good there was just like niggly things like that that personally annoyed me which may not annoy you and i did just find the ending was very predictable and very typical of what you would expect for an insta love romance but yeah like it was good there was just like a few things in there that annoyed me which brought down the rating the sixth book of the month was another young adult read and that was suddenly a murder by laura munoz i think that's how you say the author's surname this i rated 4.75 out of 5 so this is a murder mystery so we have our six main characters as you can see on the cover they've just graduated from high school and they go to this private island to celebrate their graduation it's just the six of them and then they are staying in this old house and there is a couple of staff there but other than that there's like no adults they have no supervision and they just kind of have free reign of this little island and this private house so cassidy is hosting this and she sets a theme of a 1920s weekend so they're not allowed any phones they're not allowed their electronics and they all have to dress in 1920s outfits they eat food that they would have had in the 1920s like they fully immerse themselves in the theme of this weekend and everything seems to be going well until one of them is murdered now the person that i thought murdered it at first i thought well this is really obvious like is it going to be the story of them trying to cover their tracks and that's what i thought it was until i got to the end and found out who the real murderer was and i was like I did not see that coming. After one of them is murdered, detectives arrive and you see interviews between each of them with the detectives and you kind of try and work out who's telling the truth, who's lying. Yeah, like I didn't expect who the murderer was to be the murderer, which made this like a really good book. Again, I was hooked. I think I read this one within 24 hours as well. Then I read Only A Chance by Delancey Stewart. This again is another arc and I gave this five out of five too. In this one, we follow Emily and she dreams of being a travel writer. She currently lives with her family and has just been writing about local travel in her area. She lives in California, but she really dreams of being paid to travel further afield and write articles about hotels destinations things like that then one day she is offered the chance to attend a writing conference in colorado there is a bit of ulterior motive behind her wanting to attend this so at the start we learn her brother died in a military accident and her father blames this guy for it and he owns the resort where this writing retreat is being held so she wants to go so she can meet this guy and find out if he really does deserve the blame that her family are putting on him. So Archie is our male main character and on their first meeting they get stuck in a lift together and it takes a while for them to be rescued so they just end up talking and they really hit it off and he says like as an apology like come to the bar I'll get you some free drinks you can have some food and just an apology for getting stuck in this lift. So as they're talking she finds out that Archie's uncle who was the one that left them resort left like a little treasure hunt and they've almost sold it but they're kind of at a dead end so Emily is like can I help you try and solve this like my fresh eyes might be good and then I could write about this for my magazine and it could be a good story and he's like yeah sure and his sister is in this and a lot of his friends help like run this resort and at first his sister's a bit like do we really want to let this stranger in but he really trusts her and she is a fresh pair of eyes and it does work and she does pick up things and slowly they find a few more clues on this treasure hunt and they just work really well together all of the characters in this felt like one big family and the resort was called casper ridge and i just want to visit this place it sounded so cool the treasure hunt was really fun to read and i did love the conclusion of this treasure hunt and i want to read more by this author i really loved it then i read zodiac academy ruthless fate by caroline peckham and susan valenti this is a reread i was attempting to reread all of the zodiac academy books before the final book is released later in april and i've only got to book two so far i don't think it's going to happen i mainly listened to this on audio and my first time reading zodiac academy i did not use audio i fully read all of the books so i thought to make it a little bit different i would listen to it and i'm not going to talk too much about this because i am making a zodiac academy series a specific video where i'm going to talk about all of the books and just to like help you decide whether to read this because when i post about this on like tiktok and instagram and stuff i always get comments like is it worth it because 
this is a big series it's a big commitment there's a lot that happens so i'm in the process of making that video of a breakdown of this series so don't know when that will be coming i was hoping to get up before book nine but it might have to be a full series breakdown including book nine because i'm not going to get there before release i honestly i'm not enjoying this series as much as i did the first time around but i don't know if that's because it is a reread and i know what happens and i'm not particularly happy with the way the story ends up going but overall like it is still enjoyable and I'm excited to continue this reread. Then I listened to another audiobook and that was Outer Banks Lights Out. So this is a book based off the TV show Outer Banks. Obviously I have recently started watching it. I know I'm like four years late to the party but I am obsessed. It is my favourite show at the moment and I've been wanting this book but it was quite hard to find and then I saw that it was included within the Audible subscription. So I listened to it. Again it was okay. I gave it three out of five. It started off really good and I thought it was going to be five stars. The characters in the story read just like they appear on the screen. I was like this is really really good but then as the story went on one of the characters gets a love interest and from that moment I felt their character was then very different to how they are in the show and it just didn't really feel like them. But at the start of the book, you get all of like the main characters, John B, JJ, Pope and Kiara. It's spring break and they're all like getting up to some mischief in this hotel. And like, that just felt like it could have been a scene out of the show. Then JJ and John B head out on a boat and a storm comes in and they meet a boy and a girl who are on another boat. And that's when things just started to feel unlike the characters and like it was okay like the setting felt very similar I just feel like I was really comparing it to the show and the characters just they felt different towards the end of the book as to how they were when it started so if you like the show Outer Banks I would definitely recommend like picking this up because you know the start of it felt like it could be from the show but it didn't feel very true towards the end. Then I read Bexley's Biker. This was on Kindle Unlimited and it rated this 4.5 out of 5. So in this we have Where's Our Male Main Character and he is facing jail time. He has a lawyer, Bexley, and he has kind of always been in love with her and she has never wanted to push that line. Like she is his lawyer. She He's employed her, like she's professional. She don't want to go there, but she is trying to help lessen his sentence. Then we find out that Bexley has a bit of a past and her ex-husband is after her and Wes is not going to let this happen. He's like, you are going to move into our clubhouse. You're going to stay with me and you're going to be under our protection at all times. At first, she's like, this is really unprofessional. But as things kind of ramp up, she's like, yeah, no, I'm going to stay here. And she tries to keep a line there, but she gives in. <laughs> of course she gives in. This was spicy. There was twists in this that I did not see coming. I have heard lots of good things about this book. I know it's part of a series and I'm definitely going to go back and reread this whole series because I just thought it was really good. Then I read Say You Swear. I rated this a four out of five. It was a three out of five for like the majority of the book, but as I got more towards the end, I pushed it up a bit. So I knew this was popular, but I did kind of go in blind. This is a very slow burn romance and I wasn't expecting the way it went that it was going to go that way. So at the start we have Ariana. She has her brother and her best friends and they are all going to stay at like this beach house. It's the end of summer. They're about to head off to college and they're about to have like the final few weeks together before they start college. And Ariana has been in love with one of her friends and one of my brother's friends, Chase, like forever. And she kind of knows that he's interested, but he has never wanted to cross that line until they're on this little trip and something happens between them. And then he ends up breaking her heart. So she goes off to college and she doesn't really want to be around him anymore, but she doesn't want to tell people why, because she doesn't want like her brother and that to know what happened between her and Chase. Then she ends up meeting Noah and I absolutely loved Noah. Like as a character, I would give him five out of five. And they start off as friends and they start to get closer. And as they get closer, this is when Chase starts to realise what he's lost. Something happens to Ariana and she kind of has to decide which one she wants, but she might not have the full information that she needs to make this decision. And what happened to her like I didn't know that happened to her like if you read this you'll know what I'm talking about and 
I was truly shocked. Like as it got towards the end, I was like, wow, I didn't see any of this coming. But the first sort of like half of it was really, really slow and I did want to DNF and I'm glad I didn't because it really did surprise me the way it went. But I did feel like it was way too long. And like, I can see why this book was so long, but at the same time, it felt like it didn't need to be that long. And if it was a bit shorter, it probably could have been a five star because I did like the characters but it was just a little bit too slow for me. Then the final book of the month, I finished off on an arc and that was Beginnings by Bridget Nicole. I gave this four out of five. This is book one in the Pinewood Pack series. As you can probably tell by the title, this is a wolf shifter romance. So at the start of the book, Olivia is attending a wedding with her fiance. She is sat with her best friend, Chloe. And this is where she meets Ethan, our male main character. So he is the alpha of the pack and Olivia does not know anything about wolf she doesn't know that they exist but as soon as ethan sees her he's like she's my mate and he pulls her aside and he kisses her and she's like hold up i'm engaged i'm not a cheater but he's like you're mine like just just leave your fiance you don't need him and she's she's like you can't just come up to me and be like this she is immediately attracted to ethan but she just feels a lot of guilt towards her fiance Turns out her fiance is not who he appears, so later on that guilt is gone. But Olivia is just like really, really overwhelmed with Ethan, so she flees from this wedding. Yeah, he's just like very full on with her, and at first I was like, whoa. But then, because he's like an alpha, it kind of like makes sense why he was so full on. But like, if I was Olivia, I probably would have been scared away. <laughs> so as you can probably tell, like he is a very possessive hero. So if you love possessive heroes, you're definitely gonna love this one but Olivia is then eventually brought to like the place he lives and she learns about the walls about mates and they got together quite quickly and there was a lot of spice and I personally wish there was a bit more of a build-up between the characters before they went straight in but I also understand like it's like a wolf shifter alpha romance so the alpha is of course gonna be all in straight away there was a lot of drama towards the end and it does kind of end on a cliffhanger um so be prepared for that <laughs> and i did really like the idea of our alpha having a human mate and she kind of has to like prove herself to him and the pack well she doesn't need to prove herself to him but like she feels like she has to and yeah i liked it like it wasn't my favorite wolf shifter romance that i've ever read but it was good <laughs> okay so they are all of the books that i read this month i think considering i was in a slump I did quite well but april i have high hopes for i have a load of books on my tbr that i think are predicted five stars so to get me out of this slump i think next month i'm just gonna read all predicted five stars and hopefully have the best reading month ever but yeah uh, if you've read any of these books then let me know what you thought of them or if there are any on here that you are now going to pick up let me know i hope you enjoy it and i will see you again next week <laughs>